Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I'm working on an Xbox 360S and this is the 4GB model. This unit is part of a bulk purchase of faulty consoles that I bought a couple of weeks ago and when I power it up it has the so-called red dot of death. The unit's plugged into my capture card but there's no audio or video whatsoever. When an Xbox 360 is completely dead like this, we're able to generate what's known as a secondary error code by holding down sync and cycling through the eject button. In my case, the error code is 4141, but 4 lights actually mean 0, so the error code is 0101. Sometimes these secondary error codes can help point you in the right direction when you're trying to figure out what's wrong with your Xbox 360. And in my particular case, this error suggests that something's going on with my USB ports. Big thank you to the subscriber that shared this tip in my last Xbox 360 repair video. So I proceeded to visually inspect the USB ports. The ones in the back looked really good, didn't look like they had seen much use. The ones in the front looked quite dirty, definitely heavily used, but it didn't look like any pins were bridged or broken or anything like that. Honestly, they looked fine. So nothing left to do but open this thing up and do a full teardown and take a closer look inside and see if we can figure out what's going on. You're going to have to cut the warranty sticker to get to a clip hiding underneath. I just soaked mine with some rubbing alcohol and peeled it off completely. And careful when you're pulling the faceplate off. There's a thin ribbon cable you have to unlatch to release it. two screws securing the RF module, then it just pulls right out. And one screw to release the Wi-Fi board. I'm not sure how much dust and hair the camera's picking up, but this thing was pretty filthy. So all the plastic parts got a hot bubble bath for a few hours. There's one screw on the back securing the hard drive bracket. You can also go ahead and remove the fan duct out of the way and two more screws to release the hard drive bracket. One on the top through the connector and one on the back. All the remaining screws need to come out to release the motherboard. There's a bracket for the DVD drive that needs to come out of the way, and then we can release the motherboard from the frame. Now I have a chance to inspect the USB ports up close, including all the pins on the back, and there's definitely some debris and dirt, especially in the front ones, but nothing that would short the internal pins, and the pins on the motherboard side look pretty good as well. No bridges, no corrosion, nothing like that. So I had to do more research on this issue, and although I didn't find videos that address this exact problem, I did read several discussion board posts that suggest that problems with the Southbridge chip on the motherboard can sometimes generate the secondary error code that I was getting in addition to not outputting audio or video. Given my USB ports weren't damaged in any way, I decided that I was going to reflow the Southbridge chip and see what happens. Either way, this unit's filthy, so I'm going to super clean it first. Here I'm just loosening up the caked on thermal paste with some Goo Gone. And I shower the board with some 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol to get rid of any dirt and grime that might interfere with the reflow. If you saw last week's video where I reflowed the GPU on an Xbox 360, you know that I don't have a hot air rework station and I don't have any short term plans of getting one just yet. So I'm going to use what I do have and that's an inexpensive heat gun to do the reflow. 
I have the Xbox motherboard sitting on its metal frame to help dissipate the heat, and I start by warming up the back of the motherboard for about one minute. Here, I'm a few inches away from the board, and my heat gun set to low, which is 750 degrees. Then I flip the board around, and I repeat the process to warm the front of the motherboard. Now, unleaded solder is going to melt at around 425 degrees, but I've practiced this several times on junk boards, and if you're a few inches away and constantly moving, you're not going to melt anything, you're just going to warm the board up. Even though I'm reflowing the Southbridge chip, I'm applying high quality flux to the XC GPU, the Southbridge chip, and the HANA chip. And the reason I'm doing this is, when I reflow the south bridge, even though I'm going to move in closer to the board with the heat gun, I'm going to be in constant motion. The area around the south bridge is going to get really hot, and the flux around the XC GPU and the HANA chip is a bit of an insurance policy if the heat travels down a little bit further than I intend it to. At this point, I warm everything up for another 30 seconds or so, then I zoom in about an inch away from the south bridge in constant motion for about 90 seconds. Here, it's hard to gauge the distance because of the overhead shot, but I'm actually several inches away from the board, and I'm just keeping everything warm for another minute to give the south bridge a chance to cool slowly. Then I leave the board completely undisturbed for an hour to cool down all the way. An hour later, it's time to super clean the board, get rid of all that flux, and get everything ready for reassembly. Next, some Arctic MX4 before the heatsink goes back on. I removed this plastic bracket before the reflow. I didn't get it on camera, but it's just on there with some double-sided tape. And like I've shown on my other projects, I always crisscross screws when reattaching heat sinks to apply even pressure. Not sure what to say at this exact moment, so I'm not gonna say much. Just remember when you're putting the power cord cone side down, because that back plastic piece isn't there to guide us. And you can actually put it in backwards. Fingers crossed, guys. green it's green it worked oh my god it worked wow we have someone's profile there there it is you guys can see that Oh, oh, oh. oh, I want to be careful with that ribbon. Let's quickly test again. Come on. 
baby. When I put my finger on the drive, that buzzing sound goes away. I think once it's all hooked up, it should be okay. Awesome. Yeah, the dryer is buzzing like that because it's loose. I think once everything's screwed in, it's going to be okay. But um, given that everything's working, I probably should disassemble that drive and clean it up just given how filthy the system was. Back from the future. When you've gone through all the trouble to refurbish a system like this, you want to make sure you don't skip the optical drive. A clean laser and smooth gears are just going to make for an easier time reading discs. And I'd like to enjoy this system for many years to come. I'm going to update this 360 to the latest dashboard and revisit some Xbox Live content that I purchased many years ago when I was still in college. I'm going to apply some new lithium grease to the rails, just getting rid of what was left of the old stuff. And that's all there is to refurbishing a dirty optical drive. Okay, time to put this thing together once and for all. This system was clearly very well loved, which is probably another way of saying it looked like crap. But despite the scratches and scuff marks, considering where we started, I'd say it's looking pretty handsome. Wi-Fi is working just fine, I was able to recover my gamer tag and update to the latest dashboard version. Fans running nice and quiet and optical drive is running pretty smooth. And after hooking it up to the living room TV, someone was all over it and found a new game that they like. <laughs> do you like do you like Peggle? <laughs> Are you gonna be the Peggle champion? Not at this not at this rate. It'll get better. It's all in the physics of it. It ain't happening. Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> 